everybody, it's Eddie G on Crypto. Let's dig in. So we all know that Fed Chair Powell is going to have his press conference starting at 2 p.m. today. I really am expecting a 25 basis point move. And the reason why is because zero would be stupid. <laughs> Let's just start there. Okay. And the reason why I say it's stupid is because inflation hasn't gone away. Okay. It's not that inflation has gone away. It's that the troubles in the banking industry have over shadowed everything else that's going on and sucked up all the oxygen in the room. So that means that zero would be definitely bad because that would mean that, oh, we took our eyes off the ball and then it got worse. Like, nope. So a 25 basis point move says that, hey, we're still paying attention, but we don't want to shock the system any more than it has already been shocked. A 50 basis point move is the same thing, just in the opposite direction. We just took a hit from the banking industry and nobody will understand why we want to have another hit that's self-inflicted. So let's slow down, let things, you know, iron out and see what happens in the next meeting, right? That's how I look at it. So I think 25 basis points, you know, would be the smart move. Now, I'm not the only person that thinks that. I think it's like 75%, 72% the other day. I think it's 75% now that are thinking the same thing. Now, something else to consider, OKC coin, the exchange has dropped or delisted Miami as well as New York City coin. And the reason why the liquidity on their platform for those coins is so low that they're susceptible to manipulation and fraud. Think about that. I mean, it's amazing. If this article had not come out, I wouldn't have paid attention to it because those are, those are two coins that I would never have on my list of things to buy. Like, what purpose do they serve? Like, seriously. So, yeah, I let that go. However, I will say Miami coin showed some promise, and I think maybe they still are doing some good things, but you kind of got to pay attention to what your liquidity is going to be, how many people are using it. Just what's the benefit of the coin? And I think that's what that's what got everybody caught up is what's the true benefit of the coin that I can't get in another coin. Um, looking at Sushi Swap now, Sushi Swap is a DeFi project, and I want you to think about this. They are a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO. So how you how they were able to cert, to subpoena the CEO, as well as the organization to begin with, is a big deal. And by, by they, I mean the SEC. So how does that work? Like, I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm just kind of like, wow. Um, not that they should be operating under the covers or anything else like that. But the other question is, why? What's the problem? Um, something else that I'm thinking of is, are they going to subpoena... DBS Bank, JP Morgan, and others that were involved in a in a uh, DeFi transaction just a few months ago. What's the reason? Now, I do want to say there's a difference between a Wells issuance and a subpoena. A Wells notice says, "Oh no, we're coming for you. Action is pending." A subpoena is merely saying. Yeah, we're kind of looking at you now. We're kind of kicking the tires. We want to see if we should go after you. And something like that usually leads to leads to action, but it's not a guarantee. So that's the difference between being served a Wells notice and being served a subpoena. Right now, it's just a subpoena. But that subpoena was enough for SushiSwap to want to develop a $3 million USDT-based reserve fund for legal fees. Um, clearly, they're going to fight. Uh, so that's a big deal. Um, I also would like, would like to get a better understanding. I think I need to find that and get a better understanding of why they were subpoenaed. Like, why is the investigation underway? So that's something to think about. But it, it shouldn't be any kind of surprise. And the only reason why I say so is because the SEC has been chasing after everybody to kind of poke holes in various places within the crypto community. So this is just another strategic move to try to do the same. The last time they won was with Kraken, and they look like they're about to take it on the chin when it comes to Ripple because, yeah, their their uh, number one um, their number one witness who actually set the rules and guidelines for how you would determine if a coin was a security or not. Yeah, the judge said nope, not going to allow that. So that one's gone. Then they also allowed the idea of the testimony from or the judge's statements from the Voyager trial saying that 
the SEC, pointing out that the SEC does not have a way of actually determining if something is a security. So the VGX token by Voyager is not a security. Hence, that testimony can be entered into the trial for, um, not trial, but the case for, yeah, trial, for um, SEC versus Ripple. So yeah, that's why Ripple shot up. And yeah, I, I bagged a lot of Ripple. Um, I'm looking at the whole situation. I'm just saying to myself, the SEC is out of control, is operating without rules, regulations, guidelines, transparency, anything. And I think that's the major problem. It's not that I want to hate the SEC. I don't. They serve a purpose. I just think that the executives right now in the SEC have gone truly off the rails. And Congress is not stepping in to say, hey, let's fix this. So Commissioner Sumner, Summer Mer Mersinger saying that, hey, Congress, you need to step up and demand that the agencies cooperate in managing the space. Now, the perfect example is you have the triumvirate overseeing the banking industry, the OCC, the FDIC, and the Federal Reserve Bank. So there is proof out there that agencies can get along. I think that you just have right now a rogue agency in the SEC and they need to be kind of reeled in and it's becoming noticeable to a lot of people. Even Anthony Scaramucci, the mooch, actually got out there and said, listen, you know, we, instead of hammering a nascent industry, we should be helping it grow by giving it guardrails and creating programs to foster that growth. Now, those guardrails would come with, you know, penalties if you operate outside those lines yes most people in the industry like me are just kind of saying yeah if you take a pragmatic approach and provide you know those kinds of things you will have a better stronger age a better stronger industry you'll have growth you'll have all that and so it's kind of weird so now you look at what the president's yearly economic report says. It says that, you know, most crypto is, you know, not based on any real value. <laughs> Mike Novogratz says, so wait a minute, if that's true, then give me back my money for all my crypto trading for the past 10 years because it has no, no intrinsic value. So we know that's not going to happen. So which is it? It has value or it doesn't have value. And I think the problem is, is that the economic report from the from the president's office from the White House says, you know, one thing about most cryptos and then they apply it to all cryptos. And that's the problem. That's where you fail. Nothing is all or nothing. OK, nothing is all or nothing in this case. And by saying that you're damaging the whole industry and just. The statement itself is kind of stupid because Mike Novogratz pointed it out. Listen, if I have to pay taxes on it, then it has freaking value. Right? Period. If I have to pay taxes on my actions in a space, then that space has value. Period. So go fix your statement. Realize the stupidity in it. And maybe say something a little bit more pragmatic. Yeah, that's one of my favorite words. Because most people don't know what it means. And they also don't actually, actually practice. That means stop, slow down, think. Give thought to what you're doing. Give fruitful thought to what you're doing. Now, NFTs are being could be looked at as collectibles by the IRS and taxed as such. It's out for public opinion and public comment, and it will be out there until June 19th. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm expecting that. I'm expecting that it'll go through because, you know, people don't say anything. It'll go through and then NFTs will be taxed as collectibles. Um, so. I really don't I really have to talk to my accountant to see if that's a if that's an issue. Like, is it ta are they taxed every year? Is it taxed once? So I'd have to look at the tax code to see what it is. So like, if you invest in gems, that's a that's a uh, that's a collectible. Anyway, you know what we should do? We should get into the numbers. So give me a mi minute. Let me get over here. All righty. So the fear and greed index yesterday was sixty six. Today 
it is 62. So we're still deeply in the greed section. However, eh, the, the heat slowed down just a little bit there. I think it, it'll probably wind up heating up again if Powell comes out and says 25. If he comes out and says 25, I think that's kind of baked into the numbers. But if he comes out and says zero, people are going to lose their freaking minds. Same thing if they say 50. Zero, all markets shoot up. 50, all markets crash. 25, things perk up a little bit. That's what I'm thinking. That's just, that's just what I'm thinking. Um, now, this number is actually kind of interesting. We're getting close to $70, 000, $70, million, sorry, sorry, $70 billion in total value total value locked. Um, Bitcoin, again, looking at this, just look at this chart. This is what I keep telling people to look at. What's going on? Up gently above, like we're playing with that 2828 number right there. That orange line, this orange line, not the red one, but the orange line right there. Look at my crosshairs right there. That is the 2828 line and we keep playing with that line and i think it'll be i think it'll be a hard time before we before we drop again like i said it would be a it would be a 50 basis point move that would actually make everything drop and and when i say drop i mean it would be a hard drop and it, and it would be immediate so at 2 p.m pay attention to what fed chair powell is going to be going to be yapping about because that's going to be the big noise as well as pay attention to what he's saying and what he's doing, right? Um, if I'm up 17, 1766 BTC, I just showed you 28, 140. XRP shot up because of reasons that I told you about the court case that's going on. Um, that's a very big deal. That's a very big deal. I, mean, I am a big holder of XRP. I love the, I love the technology. It's fast, um, it's efficient. So there are things that are going on there that I actually really like. Um, but when I look at that number, it was, it was as high as 46 cents, uh, maybe even 47. But I'm looking at this number and I'm saying to myself, we could actually get an answer to this fairly soon. Fairly soon. Because with that expert witness being thrown out um, or being excluded, the SEC has no case. So if the SEC has no case, then what is it? And then you're going to, I would see that, I would say that Coinbase would probably relist everybody that had XRP listed before, before this action would almost immediately relist XRP. And that in and of itself would make it shoot up. It would absolutely make it shoot up. So these are things I'm paying attention to because I'm making decisions on, should I buy some now? Wait, when it shoots up. The, the amount that I buy today, sell it as a profit and then wait for it to come back down because you know what's going to happen. It would shoot up and then pull back a bit before it rises again. That's that's kind of how I look at everything. All right. If you want to look at the big board going across in text, you can see just how everything is right now. I mean, I want you to pay attention to Bitcoin. It's up almost 70% since year to date. Wow. That's all kinds of wow right there. 50% for Polygon, almost 50% for Ethereum. And there's good news coming about both, right? Gas prices have been falling for Ethereum. Polygon's picking up new business, you know, new, new, uh, there's a big gaming company in Asia that, uh, that, uh, decided they're going to work with Polygon to actually make their web three experiences better. So that's something I'm thinking. That's something I'm looking at. Um, Doge is still, they have a, it has a hard time getting past 7.5 cents. Um, even Solana is up, but you have Render that wants to move to Solana. Yeesh, I oof, that's not something I would be hanging my hat on right now. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. If there's something you want me to research or something you want to share with me, I would greatly appreciate it because I love to learn things and I love to share things. Anyway, I hope you have a good one. Bye bye.